Hello YouTube! Welcome to episode 13 in my Digital Aquarium Controller series. Today we're going to look at one way to connect your Raspberry Pi and Adreno Mega for two-way communication. I'll be using serial UART pins on the Pi and Adreno rather than USB. This poses a few additional challenges but leaves the USB ports open for other purposes such as programming the Adreno. One of the challenges in this communication is that the Adreno and Pi have different voltages so they can't be directly connected. To overcome this, I'll be using a simple level shifter. This one's available from Adafruit for just a few dollars. The shifter converts the 5 volt signal from the Adreno down to 3.3 volt and the 3.3 volt from the Pi up to the 5 volt. To wire this up, 5 volt and ground from the Adreno goes to the high side. The 3.3 and ground from the Pi goes to the low side. The RX and TX pins on the Pi connect to the RX and TX on the low side and the RX and TX pins on the high side are reversed and sent to the Adreno, RX to TX and TX to RX. Here I make the cable with the level shifter for my tank controller. This will connect the serial UART between the Mega and the Pi and also provide 5 volts to power the Pi from the PVC power supply. Now that we can physically connect them, we need to configure the software on the Pi. These steps are outlined in the description. First, flash the SD card and build a standard Pi. I'm using Raspbian Jesse image from January 2017 on a Raspberry Pi 2B. Once your Pi is booted up, open a console and run sudo apt update to get the newest updates. Next, enable SSH, change the host name, reset the password. This is optional, but always recommended. By default, the serial pins are configured to output on boot for debugging. We need to disable that so that we can use it. To do this, make a backup of boot command line dot text, and then edit it and remove the reference to TTY AMA0. Once this is done, restart your Pi. This image comes with Python pre-installed, but the module to use it with serial communication may still need to be installed. To do so, run sudo apt-get install python serial. Let that install, restart, and now we can test. First, I create a folder to work in. You should also set the time zone and otherwise configure the Pi however you want it. Okay, now connect the Pi to the Adreno using the level shifter, and we'll load some code and test the connection. First, on the Adreno side, I create script to interpret commands sent over serial. This is a basic G-code style interpreter to help Adreno parse commands that are sent to it. The link to this test script is in the description. A few global variables are defined. Buffer is a character array to store inbound serial messages. So far stores the number of characters in the array that we need to process. Serial in message stores the current string of text parsed by the parse chunk function. And the rest are just used as examples for values that we can be set or sent. In setup, we start with serial on serial 1 at 9600 baud. This could be tuned to be faster, but 9600 is sufficient for the communication done here. In loop, we call the listen to serial function. The send to pi function is used to format outbound serial communication. It is also handy to output to both the USB serial monitor and the pi on serial 1. Ready for serial just resets the so far buffer. Listen to serial does the real work. This function starts by reading any serial message and placing it in a character array. When it gets a return character, it finishes the read and runs process command, then resets so it may start again with the next line. This is done for both USB serial input and then for serial 1 on the Pi. Parse chunk is used to search through the character array and form a string out of a portion of the data sent. Portions are delineated by spaces. The command is called with a number and a default value. It'll parse through the array and return the portion after the number of specified spaces, or it returns back the value sent as the default. However, since this value may be used multiple times, rather than return it in the traditional manner, it sets the serial in message variable to the value. Process command uses parse chunk to determine what command and values are sent. In this example sketch, it processes three types of commands, A0, A1, and A2. 
If A0, it looks for the word ready, wait, act, or done. And it sets a variable based on which command it sees. This doesn't do much else here, but you might see how this could be used in a larger script to help organize and regulate processes. A1 is used to set a variable value. It looks to the next chunk to see the variable name, and then it sets that variable value to the third chunk. In this example, we're looking for a variable named moon phase. And finally, A2 is used to request that Adreno sends info back over the serial port. Here, it formats and reports back the name and value of the moon phase variable. Now on the Pi. To communicate over serial, I have a simple Python script, posted here in the video description. We import and use the Python serial library installed earlier. Then set the port variable to communicate over serial using the serial library, using TTY AMA0 at 9600 baud listening for 20 seconds. Then we use a while loop to repeatedly check the serial port. First, we send a2 command to the Adreno using port.write. Then we listen for the response and save it to the receive variable using port.readline. Clean up the received value a bit by stripping off the slash r at the end, and then output that to the screen. If we run this, you can see we get a bit of a loop, but it makes for a successful test. The Pi sends the a2 command to the Adreno, and it's received. Then Adreno sends the value of the moon phase variable back to the Pi as it should with an A2 command, which is also received. And since we've left it that simple, it just keeps repeating that over and over. And there we go, the Pi and Adreno are communicating. From here, we can modify the script to run as a service, parse the data, save it to a file or into a database, build web components to interface the data and send commands back to the Pi, but all of that's gonna be for a later video. For now, we've got it communicating. So, please share any suggestions or questions in the comment, click like and subscribe, and until next time, thanks for watching.